talk about keto, let's talk about fasting, let's talk about some of the struggles you've been having on your keto and fasting journey. Hello, first and foremost, my name is Ben Azadi. I am a best-selling author of three books. Uh, I'm the founder here at Keto Camp. We're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people on planet Earth. So let me just double check and make sure that I am live with you here on Facebook and on YouTube. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I see that I am live and I'm live on Instagram as well. I wanna support you on this coaching call here. Every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, I go live with you. I was a little bit late today because I had technical difficulties, but, or I should say, and I'm excited to answer questions for you and I'm excited to educate you on keto and fasting. So let's talk a little bit about what are some of the struggles you're having. I see a whole bunch of questions here. Uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, due to Bain. Awesome, my girlfriend Natasia is from Sao Paulo, Brazil. So let me know where you're watching from. I see Lisa in the house. Good to see you, amazing Lisa. So Mark, good to see you, Mark. Mark says, Ben, my favorite dessert is frozen blueberries with heavy cream and some monk fruit. Uh, where the blueberries turn heavy cream and ice crystal? How much am I getting into trouble? Laugh out loud. I love that dessert. I do something similar, Mark. So blueberries and heavy cream or even like a coconut whipped cream are perfect. I think if you do more than a cup, you're probably going to get yourself into trouble and you might knock yourself out of ketosis. Uh, poor night's sleep, what happens is the next day when you have a poor night's sleep, you have higher levels of cortisol the next day. Cortisol or, or glucose and insulin follow cortisol and then ketones drop. So yes, I think a 30 minute power nap is appropriate if you feel like you got a poor night of sleep. What you can do is uh, between the hours, afternoon hours of 1 and 3 p.m., it turns out our core body temperature drops. So if you're able to take about a 30 minute nap or less, nothing longer, what happens is you're going to recharge your body and feel better. But if you go into a nap longer than 30 minutes, what will happen is you might feel more groggier than before the nap. So I don't recommend doing more than 30 minutes. What does it mean when ketones are 2.1 and glucose is 88, fasting 17 hours? Is that good or are ketones too high? So M. Wagner, those are terrific numbers right there. Here is the optimal range to be in when you're in an intermittent fast. I hope you have your pen and paper ready keto campers. We want our fasting glucose to be somewhere between 72 and 92. That is your blood glucose, 72 and 92. That is a good optimal range. Your body's uh, dealing with glucose very well you're not insulin resistant, you're living a long, a healthy life, great, you're aging gracefully. That's your glucose, 72 to 92 in the fasted state. Your ketones, the sweet spot for ketones I've seen in the fasted state is somewhere between 0.8 and 2.8. So M. Wagner, you're right there in the optimal range. Congratulations, you're doing something right. Hey, LaShawn, good to see you as well. Yeah, good news. I see Minnesota, Redondo Beach, Texas. How many times should I do OMAD to lose weight? Dolly, great question here on Instagram. It depends on how much extra weight that you, you have. Um, if you have more than 20 pounds extra weight, then you could do OMAD every single day. Uh, just make sure when you are eating that one meal a day, that's what OMAD stands for, you're feasting. You're eating, reminding the body that it's not starving, having plenty of fat and protein. You're eating until full for that one meal. You could keep doing it until you start to get the weight down. Sandra, good to see you. Uh, Your beautiful Sandra. Say hello to Oswaldo, sending you love today. What is the healthiest way to transition into keto long term? Great question. I teach something called keto flexing. It's the fourth pillar in my Keto Camp Academy. By the way, I have decided to offer the first pillar in my academy, a 28 day keto jump start. Uh, I just released this 14 days ago for. Uh, I was gonna release it for 97 bucks, but I decided to release it for one payment of seven bucks. And you can see on your screen here on YouTube and Facebook, if you go to startsketocamp.com, you can get that entire first pillar, my 28 day keto jumpstart program for just one payment of seven bucks. So the link's down below here on YouTube and Facebook. The fourth pillar is what I call keto flexing. So my favorite way to practice this is the 511 rule. So let me explain that to you right now. The 511 rule is amazing. Um, what it signifies is five days out of the week, you're doing intermittent fasting. Whatever intermittent fasting schedule works best for you. I personally think most people will thrive off of a 18-6 fast.
fasting schedule. So those five days you're doing your intermittent fasting, you're staying in ketosis, eating less than 50 grams of carbs per day. Then one day out of the week, you're doing a 24 hour fast, water to water to get more of this autophagy. So it could be dinner to dinner, lunch to lunch, or breakfast to breakfast, whatever works best for you. Now that leaves one more day out of the week. This is your keto flex day. This means you're going to intentionally take yourself out of ketosis with high healthy carbohydrates. We wanna go for 100 to 200 grams of high healthy carbs, lower fat on this day, no fasting on this day, to remind the body that let's get a little bit of an insulin spike. Let's make these hormonal conversions. And if you've done the work, if you've gone through my four pillars, you should be right back into ketosis the next day. So I know what you're thinking. Ben, what are healthy carbs? What are some of those healthy carbs I can eat on my keto flex day? Here's a list for you. Potatoes, sweet potatoes are fantastic. Yam, yuca, uh, fruit. This is where you have your fruit. This is ideal for that day of your flex day. You wanna have about 100 to 200 grams of this and you could have more protein on that day as well. So I see you Bubba, I see you Kim, I see so many Keto Camp Academy members on here, I love it. I see you Ayas, I see you Rolo, I see you Sandra, I think Sandra asked a question, so let me answer that for you. And then I see your question about how women should do keto differently, yes they should, I'll answer that after Sandra. What is, what is the minimum hour we should fast for our bodies to benefit? Great question. I think the bare minimum for every single person should be 14 hours. And the reason I selected 14 hours is because I, I recently interviewed Dr. Zach Bush, who's a triple board uh, medical doctor, amazing, brilliant health practitioner. Go listen to that interview on the Keto Camp podcast. And they did a study in the University of Virginia with these college students, right? Get this study. They took these young college students, and remember, the younger you are, the faster your digestive system is, right? 18 year old, 19 year old, 20 year olds, and they gave them 800 calories of pizza, standard American diet. It was mellow mushroom pizza, which apparently is a very popular pizza place. And what they did was they wanted to track how long it took for that food from chewing to enter the small intestine. Not even fully processed, but just to enter the small intestine to get processed. It took 14 hours just for that process. Meaning if you're not fasting every single day for at least 14 hours, guess what's going to happen? You're going to create a backlog in your digestive system leading to acid reflux, gas, bloating, and eventually autoimmune because autoimmune starts at the gut. So Sandra and anybody else who's wondering what's the bare minimum, 14 hours, but I think ideally if you could bump it up to 18 hours, even better. I think an 18-6 schedule is best, better for most people out there. So that means 18 hours out of the day, you're in the fasted state. You're having water and some sea salt, nothing more than that. You can have some coffee and tea for some people, but then you have a six hour feasting window. And I use that word feasting very intentionally. So you're going, let's say 12 to 6 p.m. Sandra, your eating window, and outside of that is your fasting window. Uh, I lost you, YouTube, let me find you here. All right, Ermalesh, we have a super camper in the house. Good to see you. Beans, hey Mona, good to see you as well. Beans can be okay for that flex day, just if you could soak the beans, that's better. Oh yeah, the question about should women do keto differently than men? Absolutely, There's, I have a, several interviews on my YouTube channel with Dr. Mindy Peltz, and I made videos on my own about why women should do it differently, but here's a, a small example for you. When you are, um, when, for example, I teach this in my academy, the monthly cycle, right? Ladies, you have your monthly period. I actually think it's important to get out of ketosis and do minimal fasting five to seven days leading up to your period because you have lower levels of progesterone and estrogen during those days leading up to your monthly cycle. And if you stay in ketosis strict and do a lot of fasting leading up to your period, it's gonna be, you're not gonna make these hormonal conversions. It could be a heavy period and it's, you're not gonna feel good uh, for the most part. So five to seven days, before your monthly cycle, if you time it, there's apps for you to do that. Get out of ketosis, do healthy, maybe more paleo, 100 grams or so of high healthy carbs to get those hormonal conversions. Once the period hits, then you could go right back to strict keto and fasting. So that's one example, but I have more videos on my YouTube channel. Who should not fast? Jamara, good to see you. I think every human should do at least 14 hours. 
if you have a thyroid issue, I think somebody asked earlier about Hashimoto's, you, can, you know, be, be careful. Here is the deal. The human body is amazing. The human body knows what to do as long as we remove the interference. I love fasting. I love autophagy. I love all of that. But too much of a good thing will be a bad thing. So we don't want too much autophagy. We don't want too much mTOR, which is the opposite of autophagy. So let me just explain both of those concepts to you or processes to you, and then I'll answer your question. And I'll, there's an art to this. Autophagy is a wonderful process in the human body. The body is so stinking smart. Your body right now that you have, it's the world's greatest physician. It knows what to do so long as we remove the interference. So when you go a period of time without food, like in a fasted state, the body starts to get really clever and all the body wants to do is survive. So it looks for damaged cells, damaged protein, damaged mitochondria, and it uses that for energy. Think of this, the refrigerator that you have right now inside of your kitchen. When you open up that refrigerator, picture that, picture you opening up your refrigerator. You have all these groceries inside of your refrigerator. They all have an expiration date, right? What will happen if you let all those groceries inside of your refrigerator expire, but instead of throwing those expired groceries into the trash can, you kind of just push them towards the back of the fridge and you go and you buy new groceries, put them in front of the old expired groceries and close that door. It's gonna be disgusting. Mold, bacteria, disease will form. Well, guess what? Your body is like that refrigerator. You have cells, protein, mitochondria that have expiration dates on them. As a matter of fact, out of the 70 trillion cells in the body, 70 billion of them are required to be recycled every single day. Autophagy is this recycling process. So think of autophagy as tearing down. Think of it as catabolic. It's wonderful. But you might be asking, why don't we want autophagy all the time? Well, when the body's done eating the bad stuff, it's going to go for the good stuff. So it can be too catabolic. You could lose hard-earned lean muscle, hard-earned protein. We don't want that. The opposite of autophagy is a pathway called mTOR. mTOR stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin. All you gotta know is that mTOR signifies anabolic growth. So whenever you hear mTOR, think of Arnold Schwarzenegger, think of like bodybuilders, think of growth. That's not necessarily a bad thing unless you're always in this growth period. Think about bodybuilders. Do you know why bodybuilders live, or I should say, do you know why bodybuilders die 12 years younger on average than the average person? Because they're always in mTOR, they're duplicating bad cells, they're waking up in the middle of the night and chugging down whey protein, they're eating every two to three hours. You're gonna be in a constant mTOR state and these bad cells, they're to duplicate and mutate, you never clean them out and that's a problem. So we don't want too much mTOR, we don't want too much autophagy. There is an art to this. So it's very unique to the person. In my Keto Camp Academy, I teach you the general rules to follow. And if you can see down below, I have the first pillar of my academy available to you uh, just for one payment of seven bucks over at startketocamp.com. Once you graduate from that 28-day keto jumpstart, I encourage you to get into the academy and learn the other steps. So to answer your question, who should not fast? I think everybody should fast at least 14 hours. Now, how much should you fast depends on the person, depends on... If you have a thyroid condition, you definitely want more flex days and we don't want to overdo it. So some symptoms and signs of too much fasting and too much autophagy is as such. Your thinning eyebrows, right? If your eyebrows are starting to thin, that could signify thyroid dysfunction. You're doing too much fasting, too much autophagy. If you're cold all the time, if your metabolism has slowed down, you're starting to gain weight, these are all signs of a thyroid dysfunction from too much keto, and too much fasting. There is an art to this, and I would love to teach you that art in my Keto Camp Academy, but I encourage you to start with that 28-day uh, program over at startketocamp.com. You're welcome. I'm glad I was able to ask you a question. Christy in Puerto Rico, who's a keto camper, uh, good to see you on here. Okay, before I get to the next questions, I wanna give you a brief announcement here. I'm gonna be doing, so here's the deal. We live in a unique world right now. I, I think you would agree. There's a lot of stress, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of uncertainty. How would you like for me and three other incredible speakers to teach you how to transfer that fear, that stress, and that uncertainty 
into something great. How to take your health to a new level right now during this pandemic. How would you like to learn about that? Well, this brings me to tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to be um, a part of this amazing webinar here on YouTube. You can see it right here, <laughs> right here. I'm going to be doing a live webinar called the I Am Superhuman webinar with three other incredible speakers. We have um, Angie Sanchez, we have Pablo, who's hosting it, we have Last Core, and we have Brant Voke. So we're going to be doing a teaching, a 90-minute training on how to transfer this fear into an energy that's going to make a big impact in the world. All proceeds, 100% of the proceeds are going to support local businesses here in Florida. It's a one-time payment of 15 bucks. There are some spots available. I encourage you to go to this link right here and go to I am, uh, what is it, uh, mindfulevents.com. I would love for you to be on this webinar tomorrow taking place Thursday, May 21st at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Go to mindfulevents.com. That is mindfulevents.com. Lessons via leaders. Good to see you, Will or Shaw. I don't know which one of you it is, but good to see you. Go check out Lessons via Leaders as well. So I would love for you all to be on this webinar. Go to mindfulevents.com and you can see it right there on my screen. Let me remove this and let me go back to this right here. Okay, so let's continue on here. What are some more questions you have for me? Is there a test for knowing keto adaptation has, keto adaptation has occurred? Yeah, yeah. So I talked a little bit about it earlier. How do you know if you're keto adapted? I do have a video on my profile talking about five ways to know that you're in ketosis. And that's going to be on my, on my um, Keto Camp YouTube channel. But let me just explain to you right now. Test your numbers. The optimal numbers to look for, I explained it earlier, 72 to 92 glucose in the fasted state, and then somewhere between 0.8 and 2.8 ketones. Jamar, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for putting that there. Um, here's an advanced test for you. If you're testing your blood gl glucose, here's an advanced testing for you to see how metabolically flexible you are. When you're done eating a meal, a keto meal, one hour after eating that meal, we want our glucose to be somewhere between, somewhere around 120 and below. That's good. That means you have good metabolic flexibility. You're keto adapted. Two hours after a meal, you want to test your glucose again and you want that below 100. Those are the things to look for. All right, let me get to your questions on Facebook. Oh, the 331 is fantastic. I think that's great. Alessandro, how could I adapt intermittent fasting to my keto? Can it be okay to do three meals every two days, OMAD once a week, and then doing another two meal? Yeah, Alessandro, I think it's, I love that routine. First of all, before you do fasting, I think it's important to get keto adapted. So in my 28 day jumpstart, I teach you how to do that in 28 days, but the first 14 days we're keto adapted and then we add fasting. Once you are practicing intermittent fasting, Alessandro and anybody else, always change up your schedule. The more you can mix things up, change the different food, keto foods that you're eating. Rotate your fasting schedule. Do 18-6, do OMAD, do 16-8, do 24, do different keto foods, do keto flexing. The more you change up your routine, the more results you're going to get. Think about it this way. What does a great personal trainer do? Have you ever worked with a great personal trainer? I used to be a personal trainer for seven, several years. We are always mixing up the workouts for the clients. Why? To keep the body guessing. So the body never reaches homeostasis. So they're always getting results. Same thing with keto. Same thing with fasting. So always change things up. Things up because when you do so, good cells get stronger Bad cells do not adapt. So I hope that was helpful. Do you have any tips to check in if I'm keto without having tools to test for it? Yeah, smiles. So skip a meal and see how you feel. <laughs> Simple test. Skip a meal, see how you feel. If you feel better, you have more energy, mental clarity, focus, you're, you're, you just feel better by skipping a meal, that's a good sign right there that you're keto adapted. No test required. You mentioned Hashimoto's required fasting specific fasting schedules. Hashimoto's, first of all, is an autoimmune disease that can be reversed, by the way. I would look for heavy metals. I would go take my quiz, uh, the toxicity quiz that I have. It's for free over at www.toxicmiami.com. Um, you don't wanna to do too much fasting if you have Hashimoto's. You can do fasting. In fact, in order to reverse Hashimoto's, fasting is a big part of it. But there's a delicate balance between 
mTOR and autophagy there. So you would have some flex days. It would have to be custom to you and your health history and what you got going on. But yeah, there's specific techniques that um, I would have to know more to help you out there. I have two live streams for some reason on my, <laughs> what is going on here? I have two live streams on my one page. I'm going to delete one and then I'm going to stick with the other one. <laughs> it's so funny. Tips for vegetarians. Well, yeah, keto is not about eating a whole bunch of fat. Keto is about low carb. So you could still be low carb and um, vegetarian. So you would have more of the fermented soy, like natto and tempeh. Those are better sources of um, protein. Okay, I have more questions here on YouTube. YouTube is, oh wow, we have a lot of people on YouTube. Hey, YouTube, please hit the thumbs up button. Hit it, smash it, it'll show YouTube to show this to more people. I hope every single person on here is taking advantage of my 28-day keto jump start. okay? It's originally 97 bucks, but I'm offering it for just one payment of seven bucks. So if you see the link down below, startketocamp.com, here's what you're going to get. Over 50 videos on keto and fasting that you cannot find anywhere else. You're going to get $600 worth of keto meal plans. You're gonna get my books, keto grocery shopping list, a private Facebook group, a structure for you to burn fat instead of sugar and do keto and fasting the right way in 28 days. So I encourage you to take advantage of that because that deal is not going to last. Go to startketocamp.com. Once you graduate from that, you'll move, you'll have an opportunity to move into my Keto Camp Academy. In the Keto Camp Academy, there's over 170 videos. We do online fitness workouts on Zoom where I coach you and I work you out. We have two group coaching calls per month, health protocols. It is the greatest health coaching program in the world. So I encourage you to start with the jump start and then go in there. Okay, um, let's see. I'm a jump starter, I love it. That's a good term right there. I'm gonna start using that. Where are my jump starters at? Jolie, I love it. Tips for hair loss while doing keto. Yes, Adriana, so when, you, when the body loses weight, hair loss is very common. I have a video in my YouTube, on this YouTube channel on what to do. B vitamins, more protein, bone broth. The hair will, re, will come back. There might be a, a period of time where the hair starts to thin, maybe for six weeks, 12 weeks, but eventually it comes back stronger than ever. So I recommend doing some things to help that process faster. So go watch my video. I talk about B vitamins, bone broth, more protein, supporting the thyroid. It's a full video. Just type in hair loss on my YouTube channel and that'll come right up. Greetings from India. I love it. We have India in the house. I hope everybody's doing well, by the way, during these unique times. One thing I wanna say about your 28 day jump start. Share it, Rupert. I want to hear what you have to say. Should you stop fasting if glucose drops below 72? I can tell you this. When I did my five-day water fast, my glucose went down to 51. However, my ketones were over five. So as long as ketones are up and you feel all right, I don't break the fast. But if your glucose was that low and you had no ketones, that, that might be an issue. One thing I want to say about your 28-day jumpstart program, says Ruport, your jumpstart program is so easy to follow. You break it down to no, uh, to a, no, a level that is not overwhelming is what you're trying to say. Oh, thank you. I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful to have you in there. How many of you are going to join tomorrow's webinar? Um, if you are, put superhuman. If you're joining tomorrow's webinar, go put superhuman. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to pull up this thing here again. Who's joining this webinar on uh, mindfulevents.com? If you are, type in superhuman. I want to see you all tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern time with three other speakers, including myself. I'm going to teach you how to take this energy right now, the fear, the stress, and transfer it into something great. I'm excited to see the other speakers. <laughs> I'm going to be taking notes because they're incredible. So I'll be one of the first speakers, and then we're going to do a Q&A. You get to ask us questions. It's going to be on Zoom and all proceeds go to supporting local businesses. It's just one uh, payment of 15 bucks. I know you are Zippor, because you are superhuman. I love it. Susie's superhuman in the UK, I love it. Marianne's superhuman, I love it. Okay, let me make sure my audio's still on. Okay, it is. All right, peanut love is superhuman, I love it. 
Let me answer some more questions for you. Margo, good to see you on here. I've been missing, I haven't seen you. I've been missing you. I'm just looking at your questions here on Facebook now. Oh, Tara, Stephen, Kim, y'all are superhuman. I love you. Max says, hi from England. Can autophagy reverse osteoporosis, please? You know, autophagy will, will help because it's going to help you with um, inflammation. But it's, I wouldn't say it's the only thing you got to do oste for osteoporosis. It's going to be a combination of things. But the benefit you'll get from autophagy is the anti-inflammatory benefits. The link, uh, Rupert, Rupert, the link is www.mindfulevents.com. I know you can't see it right here on my screen, but on YouTube and Facebook, it's, it's right here on the screen. Uh, let me go back to this. If you need the link, just DM me, but it's mindfulevents.com. On the high carb day, 333, or excuse me, 331, am I supposed to eat lower fat than I normally do? Yeah. Uh, so on your flex day, I think it's better to have less fat and more carbohydrates on that day. Yeah. So stay below like 50 grams of fat that day. Could you please do a show for vegetarian ketos and pescatarian keto? Love your info. Yeah, Zar, I'll make sure I'll do something like that for you. Lindsay, what if we can't watch with the Superhuman when it is live, but would like to see the replay? Will it be available? Yeah, we're going to record it, and everybody who signs up for it will get the replay. Just get on in there, you'll be sent the replay. Yes, Diane, Judy, I love it. I love it. That's okay, Jolie, I understand. But the replay is available to anybody who signs up, so if you can't make it live, that's okay. What's the best place to look for a keto diet? Would it be a book or online course, please? The best place is right, right here. Startketocamp.com. I have the complete guide for you. So that's where I would go. It's one payment of seven bucks, down from 97 bucks. Pink rock salt, is that okay to use? Yes, it is. I like it. My favorite is Himalayan salt. Is there any better time for eating carbs? Yes, there is, Fabi. So if you're gonna have carbs on keto, you could, you could time them around your workouts so you could still stay in ketosis and also stick with the berries. The berries are gonna give you the best result, less glucose and insulin spike. I posted a video, by the way, uh, a new podcast, Keto Camp Podcast, on seven surprising things that are knocking you out of ketosis. One of them is whey protein. So if you're having whey protein on keto, Get this, there was a study that showed whey protein caused a bigger insulin spike than white bread or just pure glucose. Yikes. So I recommend if you do have whey protein, have it around your workouts or switch to something like a bone broth powder. I use the one from Paleo Valley. If you go to paleovalley.com, they have a great bone broth protein powder. And if you use Keto Camp 10 at checkout, you will get 10% off. Jolie, thank you so much. New to Jumpstart, what do you think of shakes for breakfast? I think they're fine if they're keto-friendly shakes, Julie, and um, you're using like coconut milk is better than almond milk. Mark, Ben has everything you need for keto and fasting, breaks it down so good. Thank you so much, Mark, I appreciate that. Mindful events, it is, yes, awesome. And we have California in the house. Let me see what other questions are on Facebook. I'm gonna answer a few more questions here and then I'm gonna sign off. Hey, Gabby says, what is your plan of attack on insulin resistance? Well, um, keeps turning off. Okay. Oh, it's not showing it good. Be right back. One, two, three. Okay. So what is my plan attack for insulin resistance? Insulin resistance takes time. There is several things you can do it can be reversed. For some people it takes years, some people it takes months. How do you know if you have insulin resistance? You can take a test like the HOMA IR test. That's a great test, a fasting insulin test. Um, healthy keto, healthy fasting, doing some sort of detox to get heavy metals out of the body. These are powerful ways to take, um, to reverse insulin. It's gonna reduce inflammation. It's gonna help the beta cells in your pancreas heal. So that's a great thing to do for you, Gabby. I hope that was helpful. I'm going to answer a couple more questions. 
Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. My camera overheats and I got to just do a quick restart. I think erythritol is fine. Monk fruit and stevia are fine as well. Is it okay to break a 24 hour fast with seeded granola, chia seeds, sunflower seeds, hazelnuts, peanuts, and eggs? Yeah, Maria, that sounds okay. I, I, I would just be cautious with, with um, peanuts. In my 28 day keto jumpstart, I actually recommend getting the legumes out. So that includes peanuts and chickpeas. Uh, almonds and spinach, I recommend getting out. But yeah, I mean, that's mostly protein and fat and that's better than most ways to break a fast. The best way to break a fast is something like bone broth. What to do on a fat flex day? I don't know what a fat flex day is. Why am I still cold after one and a half months? So John, if you're cold all the time, not just during a fast, it might be a thyroid issue. So I would probably recommend Doing a th I would recommend doing a thyroid panel, a complete panel to see what's going on there. And you might need to start flexing out of keto once in a while, maybe one day out of the week. All right, I'm gonna answer a question. One more question, I'm gonna go get in a fasted workout here. Does apple cider vinegar affect supplements? Can I take them together? Uh, Serena, you can take them with supplements. Should be okay. The link for the Superhuman Conference is mindfulevents.com. Tomorrow, I hope to see you on there. And then the Keto Jumpstart is um, seven bucks down from 97 bucks over at startketocamp.com. Hey, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. You, you carved out part of the day to hang out with me. I appreciate that. Uh, can I ask you for a, a quick favor? If you've listened to my podcast, the Keto Camp podcast, it really helps the show get into more hands when the show gets ratings and reviews. So please leave the Keto Camp podcast a rating and review on Apple. Apple Podcasts, Apple iTunes. If you could do that today, I appreciate it. I might even read it on one of the episodes. So Keto Camp Podcast on Apple Podcast. Leave it a rating and review and I would appreciate you so much. Thank you for watching this entire video or just joining me for part of the live stream. Hit the thumbs up button uh, on Facebook, on YouTube and share this on Facebook. Share it with a friend, text it to a friend. I have so much love for you all Keto Campers. Every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'm live with you. So put it in your calendar. I'm going to have new videos being released on this channel every single week, three to four new videos. So I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day. I'll see you in my programs and hopefully I'll see you on tomorrow's webinar, mindfulevents.com. Bye. Thank you, Instagram. Appreciate you all so much.